Kevin and I were so inspired by driving the 800 horsepower Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. <laughs> we thought, how cool would it be to take this 1972 Challenger and make it perform up to those standards? Last time we got the Hellcrate engine mocked up with our tubular front suspension. Now we're gonna get the rest of the drivetrain built and work on the fuel system and the electronics needed to get this new engine running. So transposing the entire drivetrain out of our modern Challenger, putting it into this E-body would be a fantastic build, but we wanted to up the ante and get the added element of a manual transmission. So we made a call to American Powertrain, who has a complete turnkey kit. Everything from pedals, pedal hangers, cross members, master cylinder, slave cylinder, bell housing, everything, including detailed instructions on how to actually do it. So we save all of that time that it would have taken on the internet looking for stuff, trying to figure out what components work with other components. Now we've got a kit that works with our transmission in our car, and the best thing is that we don't have to cut up the floor. The first step in our conversion is removing the stock flywheel and dual disc clutch assembly. Then we replaced it with the center force flywheel and their dual disc clutch assembly that matches our Hellcat and its torque output. I have the very important task of keeping the engine from rotating while Kevin tightens the flywheel bolts. Any more, you might launch me. <laughs> you might launch me across the room. So it's a tedious process, but what I'm doing here is tightening each one of these pressure plate bolts a little bit at a time, and then checking the alignment tool to make sure each one of our components is still in place. We wanted to make sure everything lines up and fits in place. It all fits perfectly. One of the great things about this TKX transmission from American Powertrain is that it's small and it's strong. It'll hold up to 700 foot-pounds of torque. And for these early Mopars, it's small enough where you don't have to carve up the transmission tunnel. So now that this is all set in place, we're gonna go inside the car and see about hanging that left-hand pedal. We are taking out this automatic transmission brake pedal and replacing it with their clutch and brake assembly. It comes with a bracket that supports the clutch side of the pedal assembly and uh, a longer pivot pin. So what I'm going to do now is get the pedals mounted up in the pedal box and then once they're in place we can figure out where to mount the hydraulic master cylinder on the firewall. So the last piece of this puzzle is mounting the transmission cross member and the transmission mount into our car. It's specifically made for this E-body. Then we measure for the drive shaft, send those specs into American Powertrain, and they kick us back a drive shaft, making this a true one-stop shop experience to convert an automatic E-body to a manual transmission. There's absolutely nothing special about a Challenger. Um, <laughs>
So I am Steve Strope. I own a little shop called Pure Vision. And we concept design and hand build high-end muscle cars. I really, I am into design and element and I really like how the car was penned originally. I love that very signature uh, body line that goes down the side and then kicks up right past the door in the rear quarter. Um, it's a very aggressive shape. It's very clear when they are designing this, they were going with uh, what I call a GT car, long nose, short tail, big engine in the front. Um, obviously, it wasn't meant to be a commuter car. I mean, it did, but it was meant to make an impact visually, and the designers did a fantastic job with that. At a very, very young age, I was introduced to, and I hoarded every little car magazine I could get my hands on. And luckily for me, uh, those two were Car Crafted and Hot Rod. The magazines, the printed magazines, were uh, a humongous um, inspiration to me and was they were definitely the building block, the cornerstones of what I wound up doing with my life. So this thing had a carbureted 318 in it before, and carburetors only need about five PSI of fuel pressure to run. A port fuel injected engine like our Hellcrate over there needs somewhere between 40 and 60, and it depends on application, but 40 to 60 PSI fuel pressure. So obviously we're gonna need a better fuel pump that has more volume and more pressure. One of the important features of Holly's conversion kit is their Hydromat pickup, which basically if any portion of this pickup mat is touching gasoline, it's pulling enough in. It's pulling the correct volume in to keep the pump fed. So what we need to do now is figure out where we want to put the hat of the fuel pump. And there are several things to be aware of. Um, most importantly being where the sending unit is located because fuel injection will be returning fuel to the tank also. You don't want that spraying on the float inside the tank. You'll get an inaccurate reading. So Holly's kit has a, a foam padding here that will conform to the contours of most tanks. And it's got some extra foam if needed. But we'll basically figure out where we want to put this, where there's room above the tank, below the trunk, and uh, get it situated in the car. When you're swapping a Hemi engine into a vintage vehicle, you've got options. You can strip down a factory harness, get a factory ECU, do a custom calibration, but we wanted to squeeze every bit of performance possible out of our Hellcat swap for obvious reasons. So we chose the Holley Dominator EFI Vehicle Management System. Intended for non-emissions and racing applications, the Holley Dominator ECU has transmission control, drive-by wire, and dual wideband O2 sensor options. The Dominator systems have nearly unlimited capabilities to control any power adder or input output that you can throw at it. Full plug and play with late model Hemi engines with integrated Hemi drive-by throttle control. There's a one to seven bar map sensor capability for naturally aspirated or boosted applications like our Hellcat. There's quick start strategies for faster internal engine starting, custom tuning using Holly EFI software, and self-learning capabilities. It features full data logging capabilities to analyze and export data with user-friendly controls and four gigs of memory. You've got full laptop tuning where you can modify fuel, timing, nitrous, individual cylinders, ignition dwell, drive-by wire, and more, making the Dominator the ultimate plug-and-play system for our project. When it comes to mounting the ECU, my preference is out of the engine compartment, away from heat, away from moisture, and away from any RF interference. So right here, kind of tucked in behind the heater box, is a pretty good location. Your bottom line, just make sure you've got good access to the USB port so you can connect your laptop and do your updates and tuning.
wheels and tires have arrived and they look great. This car is almost finished. Next, we'll tackle the intercoolers, rebuilding the rear axle, and then we finally get to take it for a drive.